اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ Read in the name of thy Lord and Cherisha who created men out of a mere cloth of congealed blood. Read and thy Lord is most merciful. He who taught men the use of the pen taught men that which he knew not. These are the very few, the very first verses revealed to mankind. And it's always important to remind ourselves about its significance, about its relevance, and about its importance in our day-to-day -day lives. So in light of this verse, I think it's very important that we discuss the topic, the concept of having faith with reason. Now, we see in the first part of this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us to seek knowledge, to think. Allah says, read. That is the first word used in the formation, in the, the beginning of this religion. And building on this idea, we see that the verse continues and gives us something to think about. It gives us something to ponder about. It gives us something to study, something to look into. And where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, who created men, Allah could have just stopped there created man, but Allah goes on further and gives us the reason, he says, out of a mere cloth of congealed blood. So this is basically discussing the idea of human development in the womb. So we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us that reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is moving that little bit further to challenge our intellect, to think, to allow us to open our minds. So moving, for, moving forward, we see that these verses emphasize the concept of reading, thinking, to study. Now we see that Allah SWT mentions this concept of He taught us the use of the pen. You know, have you ever thought about it? This is a revelation of the Quran, the very first few verses, and Allah is talking about the pen. Allah doesn't say believe. Allah doesn't say pray. Allah says He taught us the use of the pen. So this is basically indicating, this is signifying our ability or the importance of research and documenting that knowledge, that research for future generations to come. Because we see when these verses were revealed, there were many knowledgeable people who learned from the land, who learned from the people, but when they died, that knowledge died with them. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that He taught us the use of the pen, encouraging us and, and emphasizing the importance of documenting your knowledge. Now, building on this idea, we see that the verse continues to talk about, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that He taught us that which we knew not. So Allah is talking about uh, the things that we don't know. And this is bringing across the whole idea that if you don't know something, if you don't understand a particular thing, then you, you as a Muslim should not just leave it there. It is our duty to go about researching it, to study about it, to inquire, to learn. That is a quality, a very important quality, the very first few qualities of a Muslim. Now, a very lovely verse that ties up uh, this point. Surah 17 verse 36, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And pursue that of which you have no knowledge, and pursue not that of which you have no knowledge. For every act of hearing, or of seeing, or of feeling in the heart will be inquired into on the day of reckoning. So this verse is very, very important. And Allah is saying, and pursue not that of which you have no knowledge. So don't follow, don't do, don't take part in things of which you don't understand, of which you don't have any knowledge. Right? And having said that, we should not accept anything as the truth other than the Qur'an. So we should not accept anything that we hear, anything that we're told other than the Qur'an. We should always verify it. And this is our duty as a Muslim. This is in the very, very first few verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discussed this importance. And we see that in today's society, 
Many people take part in, many people do things which they don't understand the reasoning behind it. Yet this verse or these verses are so very clear. And why have we deviated from this uh, message? And this is because people have lost track of going back to the Quran and verifying and we've lost their ability to reason. Now looking back at the importance and the significance of Ikra, read, being the first few verses, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, revealed this verse in order to prepare us for Islam. And what we need to understand is that Islam is not just a mere religion, it's not just a mere concept. It is something that should be applied in every field and in every aspect of our lives. Now, having said that, this religion is not just for a few group, for, for a few uh, uh, selected group of people. Um, it is for every person. So in every field, in every line of work, how can you serve Allah? How can I be of, 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 of benefit to this religion? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was preparing us for this religion to allow us to think and reason independently, to use simple logic and simple reasoning in our daily practices, to give us the ability to know the difference between what is right and what is wrong. Because sometimes we get so very confused between the right and the wrong. So we should not get easily manipulated uh, uh, in following blindly. Now, throughout the Quran, we see that Allah SWT always encourages us to think, to learn, to understand. Over and over again, we are given many, many examples for men of understanding, for those who think, for those who ponder. These are phrases used within the Quran countless of times. Now, there are many in today's world, in today's time, who practice religion without reasoning. So often we see people act in the name of religion without thinking. In doing so, we are creating a meaningless ritual instead of creating a, 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 a or producing a proactive and progressive unit. Now, if we claim to have faith, but we turn away from understanding our faith, then we are creating a state, we are creating a whole generation of ignorance. And if we produce X without understanding, it becomes pointless, then we are moving back to the time of Jahiliya, a state which Islam came to prevent. A time when babies were buried alive, pointless sacrifices, insignificant wars. They had faith. They had faith. They had very strong faith. But they did not have the understanding to couple with their faith. So we see that this led to corruption, this led to misconception, uh, this led to a very, very serious problem where people, or rulers, leaders in power try to maintain their power through ill practices or justifying their ill practices through the means of religion, manipulating the people. And unfortunately we see this happening more and more in today's world with the arise of ISIS and all these other groups. And in Allah's infinite wisdom, He has given us the key to lead us away from ever creating such a society again. We have the ultimate book of wisdom, of knowledge, and of reason. And Allah, Allah points this out in such a simple verse, to the point, Allah says in Surah 2 verse 2, Allah says, this is the book, this is the book, in it is guidance, sure without doubt. This is the book, in it is guidance, sure without doubt. So yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, if you are looking for the answers, you're looking for the reasons, this is it. Turn to it. This is the book which has all the guidance. And then Allah is reassuring us, he says, sure without doubt. There is no doubt in this book. But if we turn away from its true and intended purpose, which is guidance, is a guide to mankind, then we see that our society is doomed to move backwards, doomed to move back to the time of Jahiliya. And so often we see that our Muslim world is taking part in many pre-Islamic 
uh, practices, many uh, 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 traditions and cultures, and they place this under the banner of religion, under, under the banner of Islam. And very sadly, we don't even know this, we don't even realize this, because we fail to turn to the Quran, we fail to consult the Quran, we fail to reason. Now, a very, very inspirational story, a very enlightening story is the story of our beloved Nabi Ibrahim salam and his journey to the truth. And he, who was the greatest philosopher in his own right, the greatest thinker. And if you just look at his journey to the truth, it's so beautiful and so clear. Allah SWT discusses his story in Surah 6, verse 75 to 79. So let's look at verse 75. We gave Ibrahim insight, the ability to reflect into the mighty dominion of the universe so that he may attain firm conviction. So already we see that this verse is so clear, so simple, that in order for us to attain true faith, in order for us to attain firm faith, what qualities do we need? Allah is very clear here. We need to have insight. We need to have the ability to reflect and to think. We need to have the qualities of Ibrahim a.s. Now moving on to verse 76 and 77. When the night covered him over, he saw a star. He said, this is my Lord. But when it set, he said, I love not those who set. When he saw the moon rising in splendor, he said, this is my Lord. But when it set, he said, unless my Lord guide me, I shall surely be among those who go astray. So very beautiful, we see that Ibrahim a.s. he had this insight. He had this ability to reflect. And he realized that there was a problem in his community, in his society. Everyone was doing it. But he said, this doesn't make sense. He thought about it, he used this logic, and he said, this doesn't make sense. And what did he do? He didn't just accept it. He didn't just reject it. He went out there in search of the answers. And one by one, he turned each time. And we see that he questioned and he used his logic to say, this, is this my Lord? This can't be my Lord because it left me. Is that my Lord? This can't be my Lord. So he's using his logic, his reasoning. And then he, he says in verse 77, he says, Unless my Lord guides me. So now he's asking for that guidance. But he's making that effort, that initiative. He saying, unless my Lord guide me, I shall surely be among those who go astray. So he now understands that he is doing something that isn't right. And he's in search of this guidance. Moving on to verse 78. When he saw the sun rising in splendor, he said, this is my Lord. This is the greatest of all. So he still perseveres. He's still continuing in his search for guidance, in his search for the truth. But uh, the verse continues to say, but when the sun set, he said, Oh my people, I am indeed free from guilt of giving partners to Allah. For me, I have set my face firmly and truly towards Him who created the heavens and the earth. And never shall I give partners to Allah. So he's asked Allah for that guidance. He made that initiative. He looked and he searched and Allah gave him that guidance. Allah enlightened him. He said, I cannot limit my Lord. I cannot limit the creator of the heavens and the earth to a physical being. So he searched for the answers. He reasoned. He used his understanding. So, very important that no matter what we do, no matter if your entire community is following a particular belief or a particular way, you should always use the example of Ibrahim salam. You should always say, is this right? Is this what the Quran is following? And in Surah 7, in Surah 7 verse 199, Allah says, Hold to forgiveness, command what is right, but turn away from ignorance. This is a command from Allah. So how do we know we're following this command? We follow the example of Nabi Ibrahim a.s. We reason, we question, we understand in order to affirm our faith, in order to guarantee that we are in line with the straight path. 
Now, a very important verse before uh, I end off. Very, very beautiful verse. I think it's very important that we look at it. In Surah 2, verse 269, uh, tying up the whole story of Ibrahim uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He bestowed wisdom to whoever wills to attain wisdom according to his laws. And whoever is granted wisdom has truly been granted a great wealth. And only those who use their intellect remain mindful of what they learn. So very important verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, He will only guide you. He will only lead you to the straight path. If you want to be led to the straight path. If you make that initiative to be led to the straight path. And then Allah says in this verse, another very important point is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, and only those who use their intellect remain mindful of what they have learned. So Allah is saying, doesn't mean that you learn something that, is that it is correct. It means that you need to use your intellect. It means that you need to use your reasoning to base it on the Quran, on the values of the Quran. Is that Islam? Is that part of my religion? What does the Quran say about this particular thing? And so on. And one last point. Those that attack our religion do it so intelligently. We are the victims that we seem to be like the perpetrators. And what we need to do, we, we don't need to turn to rash violence and rash action. And you see very often where people go destroying innocence, killing, murdering, you need to use the example of Ibrahim once again. We all remember the example of all the idols. He went to his people, he destroyed all the idols and he left one idol. This is again showing us that he implemented reasoning. He tried to open up his people's mind to say, ask that idol, who destroyed the rest of it? Ask that idol. So Islam is a religion that is built on reasoning, that is built on logic and understanding. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to think independently and not to blind, blindly follow. Because this leads to false practices, misconceptions, and again, people trying to manipulate the masses to keep power. So always remember that this religion is for men of understanding. And that we can never separate our faith from logic. Jazakallah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.